2016 Suzuki GSX S1000 Review Suzuki's latest Street Fighter wraps refinement around one very potent punch. A few months ago I celebrated a very special day, a rare occasional, that hadn't been marked for many many years. One day, in late April, I received the last of the points previously subtracted from my license. I cracked a beer to celebrate, I may have even had two. Then along comes Suzuki's latest Street Fighter, the GSX-S1000. It would be relatively easy for a manufacturer to simply take its own leader class sports pick, strip its bodywork, replace the clip-ons with a flat bar, and call it a Street Fighter. However, with today's sports weapons pumping at 1-1 horsepower to kilogram power to weight ratios, the reality of riding such a beast brings with it some issues, like turning into a human windsock if you don't wheel yourself into oblivion first. To address these issues and more, Suzuki hasn't gone about the creation of its GSX S1000 in a half-arsed way. The engine has been retuned for cup half-fold types that tuned for the remainder for street use while it's been slotted into an all-new alloy frame. The GSX S1000 also scores a fully adjustable inverted fork, high-spec Rambo front stoppers, abs and a three-position traction control system, topped off by all-new instrumentation. The 999cc inline four-cylinder engine is in fact taken from the 2005-2008 GSX R1000. Suzuki says its long-stroke design promotes low to mid-range urge, making it ideal for street riding, while the compact crankshaft and gearbox layout meant Suzuki boffins could minimize the weight of the chassis. The unit produces a claimed 145 horsepower, 107 kilowatts, at 10,000 rpm and 106 nm at 9,500 rpm. That's down significantly from the original's 175-ish horsepower but believe me, there's plenty untapped to play with. Other changes include new pistons and rings, new cam profiles, new air cleaner and exhaust and a new radiator. While the mixture is delivered by Suzuki's original SDTV, Suzuki Dual Throttle Valve system, with 44mm throttle body, as found on the GSX-R1000 K7. The new alloy chassis is in fact lighter than the one found in the current GSX R1000, while it's been mated with a swingarm from the existing sports pick. The entire plot is suspended by a fully adjustable 43mm inverted kit fork at the front and a kit monoshock at the rear, the latter adjustable for preload and rebind. For washing off speed the naked receives twin 310mm discs gripped by radial mount, monoblock, four-piston Brembo calipers. These are backed by a single piston Nissan at the rear, with abs adding an extra safety net. There is no non-abs version available in our market. The chassis geometry is of course a little different to that of the track-focused Kixer. The seat height remains the same at 810mm, but the GSX-S 1000's wheelbase is longer at 1460mm, 1405mm for the Gixxer, and its steering head angle is a more relaxed 25 degrees, up from 24. The total wet weight for the GSX-S 1000 is 209kg, about 6kg heavier than the sports pick. While helping to sling that mass through the bends is a decent Renthal fat per handlebar. Niceties include a three-position traction control system, a trip computer, LED taillight front position lights and the Suzuki Easy Start system. The latter delivers one-touch starting like you find in many modern cars and eliminates the need to pull in the clutch, unless of course you're already in gear. As I swung a leg over the GSX-S for the first time, my pristine license illuminated in my wallet by the soft glow of its newly found halo, I knew I'd need to approach this test with no small degree of restraint. The ride position is innocuous enough, slight forward incline, decent legroom and a well-padded, supportive seat, but with a quick press of the starter that stubby, compact exhaust cackles into life with evil intent. Actually, the combined exhaust induction note of this bike is superb, a roar that escalates to a howl as the revs increase. For a street legal system it sure adds to the experience. The Suzuki Easy Start system is a nice touch, adding an extra layer of refinement. It's also available on the recently released SV650 and will hopefully become a standard feature on all manner of models in the future. Nailing the throttle from a standing start is fraught with danger. 
while it's relatively easy to maintain contact between the front wheel and the road. Superb fueling I big help here, the numbers on the digital speedo build with breathtaking pace. When the rev limiter kicks in at around 12,000 rpm, the speedo is hovering around 140 km per hour, in first gear. Is that smoke coming from my back pocket? Needless to say, there's a heap of power everywhere through the rev range. Yes, there's a stonking top end, but it's underpinned by a fat mid-range and a strong bottom end. The traction control is a welcome feature on greasy Melbourne roads in winter, and I actually like the lack of drive modes, it's a street fighter, after all, so let's keep it simple. The clutch is light, the gearbox shifts cleanly through its six ratios, and the chassis suspension package keeps things tidy over a wide range of surfaces. The springs are a little harsh over bigger sharper impacts, but extra control is afforded by the fairly upright ride position in the broad handlebar. I've no complaint regarding the brakes, the front stoppers aren't excessively sharp in their initial bite, but they are very progressive, and they offer a stack of power when needed. It's slim enough around town, but that wide bar necessitates a bit of waggling when filtering. Fortunately the steering lock is reasonable. The tall gearing also comes into play in the urban jungle. It was rare that I found myself in third gear in the city, let alone four, fifth or sixth. At 100 km per hour and six the engine is ticking along at 4,250 rpm. And it's top speed. Rest assured you'll give your biceps a workout just to hang on. The planets must have aligned during this test, because my license survived the week intact, only just, I might add. Full-time ownership of a GSXS would, I suspect, put licenses and bank accounts under some stress. The GSXS is tailor-made for hooning through the hills, but for me this does throw up one of the bike's limitations, its range. I recorded an average fuel economy of 6.4 L 100 km over a week spent in both town and country, and that gives a safe working range of around 240 km. Now that's not bad in sports-speak terms, but the GSXS 1000 is comfy enough to handle at least 300 km between fuel stops. Other quibbles? While the quality of the bike is generally quite good, the effective but ugly side stand looks cheap and nasty, ditto the plastic ignition surround. Then again, at $16,490, right away, the GSXS 1000 falls at the bargain basement end of the current Street Fighter spectrum, a spectrum populated by some superb rivals. Japanese, British, Italian, Austrian, German, fours, triples, V-twins, a V4, there's something on offer here to suit all tastes. Along with budgets ranging from the GSXS 1000 before us here to the $24,995 KTM Super Duke R Suzuki's GSXS 1000 can hold its head high in this hotbed of competition. Suzuki says it's targeting 40-something riders with this bike, experienced motorcyclists who want the performance without the chiropractor bills. As far as I'm concerned, and as someone who firmly falls into that target market, Suzuki has achieved its mission objective. It might not be the fanciest or tech laden bike in its class, but the GSXS 1000 is quick, competent, and a whole load of fun.